Hello, it's Mr. Doro. Today we're doing more stoichiometry, but today it's mole-to-mass problems. They're very similar to the mass-to-mole problems that we've done before, but just changed around a little bit. And I want you to be able to do an action line, changing from moles of one substance, again, to mass of another substance. Just a little reminder that when we're given moles and we have to convert to grams, we always have to go to our periodic table. You can see on this one we have uh, 79.8 moles of magnesium chloride. And if we wanted to change that to grams, if this were just a one-step deal where we're changing over to grams, then we would look at our periodic table and, let's see if I can blow this up, here we go. We would look at our molar masses, here's magnesium right over here, and there's one mg, so we'd have 24.31, and then here's chlorine right over here, and so we have 35.45, but there are two of them, and so when we go to figure that out, we would just calculate that molar mass and set up the action line. So this is what that action line would look like. We'd start with moles, go down, put on the bottom of the next one, moles of MgCl2, and then we can go to grams of MgCl2. And we get that molar mass from the periodic table, which I've calculated to be 95.21 grams. That's for one mole. If you're having trouble with the calculation of the molar mass, go to the last video the um, mass to mole video and I go through how to calculate those so make sure that you know how to do this and then you just calculate it out and when I calculated it I got 7597.758 you do 79.8 times 95.21 I rounded that to three sig figs and put it in scientific notation for 7.60 times 10 to the third so that brings us to when do we use mole to mass problems well, you use them when you're given moles of a certain thing, like x, and you're asked to find the mass of another thing, like y. And so there's a general setup for this, and I'm going to show you this, and this should be in your notes also. You should write this down in your notes. If you're given moles of x, then you're going to start out with what you're given on your action line, moles of x. Then you're going to copy down moles of x down here, and then remember, when you're at moles of x, this is where you can change over to moles of y, or moles of whatever else from your balanced chemical equation. So this is our mole-to-mole -mole ratio, moles of y on top. And then you continue on because we want to get the mass of y. So we then that's where we change, like we were doing on the last one, from moles of y to grams of y. And this is going to be your molar mass up top right here. So on your notes, you want to write that in, that that is your molar mass, and then this will be one mole. This is from your um, balanced chemical equation right here. This is from the balanced equation. And this was what you were given. So that's how you set it up. So let's take a look at this problem that, right here that's given to us. It says, how many grams of barium sulfate? sulfate are produced when 17.6 moles of barium nitrate react with sufficient sodium sulfate. So we're given moles of something, barium nitrate. We're asked to find grams of something else. So this is a mole to mass problem. And so we're going to set it up. The first thing you need to do though is start with a balanced chemical equation. So I want you to pause it and write the balanced chemical equation. Okay, so I've written the equation right up here on the top, and now we're going to go ahead and balance it. I've got two NO3s on the left side and only one on the right side, so if I put a 2 in front of that, that makes two NAs on each side, one BA on each side, and one set of SO4. So that's, go that's balanced good now. So now we're going to start our action line. Start our action line with what you're given. You're given 17.6 moles of barium nitrate. And so I'm going to start out with 17.6 moles of BANO3 to, I want you writing that every time. And no, it's a pain to write that every time, but do it anyways. So down here, I know I'm going to put moles of BANO3 to. And on the top, I can go now wherever I want to. I'm at moles of BANO3 to, so I can go anywhere I want to, and I want to get to... Um, grams of barium sulfate. Now I can't go to grams of barium sulfate, but I can go to moles because using a mole to mole ratio in the balanced chemical equation. So moles of BASO4 
And then I look up here at my balanced chemical equation. BANO32 is right here. There's no coefficient. That means it's an understood one. So I'm going to put a one in front of that down here. And then I look at BASO4 up here again. No coefficient. Understood one. So I'm going to put a one in front of that. Now I've successfully switched over from moles of BANO32 to moles of BASO4. Now I can continue on and change that moles of BASO4, but I got to do this in the actual line, BASO4 to grams of BASO4, and I get this from the periodic table. I get the molar mass of BASO4, and sometimes that's the easiest thing to get mixed up. But one mole, because it's molar mass, grams per mole, and I'm going to calculate that right now. Okay, so I got 233.40 grams for the molar mass, and I've calculated that in and found out that this is 4,107.84, but I need only three sig figs because of this. These are exact quantities. This is five sig figs, so I'm going to put that in three sig figs, and that would be... 4.11 times 10 to the third grams of BASO4. Remember where these numbers came from. Put a box around that too. Remember where these numbers came from. This is from the balanced chemical equation, mole to mole ratio. This is from the periodic table. Okay, here's a practice problem that we're going to work through. I want you to read this problem. Pause this and write the balanced chemical equation. So do that right now. If you're having trouble at all writing the equations or uh, balancing, then there are videos on that that you can go back and watch also. This is the balanced chemical equation though. And I want you to notice what we're given here. We're given 19.6 moles of copper 2 chloride. That's this stuff over here. It doesn't matter if you're given something in the reactants or something in the products. You can go either way using stoichiometry. You can go from, the, from given the reactants, find out how much products, or given one reactant, finding how much of the other one. It doesn't matter which way you go. You just got to make sure you start with the right thing. So this is two action lines, notice. It says how many grams of each product. So we're going to start with 19.6 moles of this stuff. We're going to find out how many grams of this were needed. And then we're going to do another action line, find out how many grams of this. So let's start that out right now. So we have 19.6 moles of CuCl2. And then, you know what we're writing down here, moles of CuCl2. We copy down every time. Now I can go anywhere I want to go on the action line because I'm at moles. So I'm going to go to moles of CuNO32. Now, how do you decide which one goes on bottom? Well, you decide because of what you were given right here. That gets copied down. It's not the biggest one. It's not the smallest one. It's You get copied down. And then you look at your coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. This CuCl2 has nothing in front of it. That's an understood one. This has nothing in front of it. That's an understood one. So it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. But now we've successfully switched over from copper 2 chloride to copper 2 nitrate. And then we continue on here. And then down here we copy down again moles of CuNO3. Two. And up here now we can go to grams, like we did earlier, of CuNO32. This is one mole. This comes from the periodic table right here. Okay, so I'm going to set up the other one, then you can go back and calculate these. And so the other one is set up the same way. It starts with 19.6 moles of CuCl2. I like this all in one action line as far as when we're going changing from moles of one thing to moles of another and then to grams. Don't separate it out. Don't stop right here and hit equals. Okay, so we're going to keep on going right here. Moles of CuCl2. Now we're going to go to moles of NaCl. So I've got, and from my balanced chemical equation, one still in front of CuCl2, two in front of NaCl. And then we keep on going. And as we keep going here, we get moles of NaCl, 
and then grams of NaCl. One mole, this is the molar mass from the periodic table, and so we calculate that, and then we calculate it out. Okay, this was a tough molar mass to calculate up here on this one, but 187.57, you should make sure that you know how to do that. And then I calculated the answer to be 3.68 times 10 to the third grams of CuNO32. And I need those, those labels on there each time. And also this bottom one down here, sorry I had to squeeze it in, 2.29 times 10 to the third grams of NaCl. Okay, now it's your turn to try it out. I've given you a skeleton equation right here of an acid-base reaction between sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide. I've also given you 21.9 moles of KOH, that's potassium hydroxide, and I want to find out how many grams of water that you're going to make right there. Now, you have to balance this first and then do the proper action line. You should end up with this answer right here, 3.95 times 10 to the second. Your calculator may say 394.638. I've just put it in the correct scientific notation and the correct number of sig figs. Now there's another problem to do after this one. So once you get done, you need to pause it right now, then get done, then do the next one. Okay, and once again, I've given you a skeleton equation. This is butane right here. Uh, C4H10. This is the combustion of butane. Notice it is a skeleton equation, which means that you have to balance it first. You always have to balance it, and even if it ends up being a one-to-one -one ratio, we need to know by balancing it. This one is going to require two action lines. 96.1 moles of butane is what you're starting with for each one of them. And so I want to know what is the mass of CO2 that you can get, and then a separate action line for the mass of H2O. Okay, I put the answers down here on the bottom also for you, so you need to check those answers, and these are in the correct number of sig figs and scientific notation. Hey, good luck.